What's up, Danksters? Welcome back to a brand new video. Something I have to know and something I have noted on this channel before is that I am a massive Sega fan. I love collecting anything Sega related I can get my hands on, that is. I have most of their consoles, a huge portion of their games. I mean, even, oh my god, look, look behind me right here. Right here is just a fucking shrine to Sonic. So, like, I am a huge fan. I'm even decked out in the jacket. You could tell. And Sega decided to give us some really big news. So late last year, Sega came out announcing what their next step in gaming will be. They provided a trailer and the trailer showed that the answer is that they are reviving a whole bunch of old IPs for the new era of gaming. And some franchises we haven't seen in ages. Sega Ages, Crazy Taxi, Golden Axe, Jet Set Radio, Shinobi, and Streets of Rage were all coming back to get brand new games. With the exceptions of Streets of Rage, considering that got a game in 2020, Streets of Rage 4, all these franchises were assumed dead. So it is very exciting that Sega is reviving all these old IPs and bringing out brand new video games. And while this is very exciting news for everyone that is a Sega fan and loves these IPs, there are still franchises out there that are being neglected and yeah sure they might do it down the road if these games are popular if bringing back old IPs does well for them I'm sure they will consider doing that for other franchises but right now nothing is being said about Rystar, Kid Chameleon, Echo the Dolphin and today's topic Vector Man. Now, as a kid, I grew up playing a lot of Sega Genesis games, mostly from those Sega Genesis collections on other consoles. And a game that is in almost every single one of those collections, if not all to my knowledge, is Vector Man. Vector Man has to be up there in my top 10 of Sega Genesis games. This game is just like really good. Vector Man is a 2D platformer developed by Blue Sky Software and was released in 1995. And actually, for the time, Vector Man came out to critical and commercial success. The gameplay, while being hard, is still fun and satisfying. The graphics were cutting edge back then and actually considered a rival to Donkey Kong Country, if you can believe it or not, given that game was only released a year earlier. Crazy. Well, after the success of Vector Man, Blue Sky Software quickly decided to jump on a sequel. So a year later, in 1996, we would get Vector Man 2 on the Sega Genesis. Hmm. That's a bit odd because the 32X and the Sega Saturn were already out in North America at this time, but they still felt the need to stick with the Sega Genesis. Besides being the console most people would have in their home at the time, I don't really see why they did this. We didn't even get a 32X port of Vector Man 2 or a Saturn port, but it did and, you know, who am I to question God? Well, anyway, Vector Man 2 would release and while it's not as good or successful as Vector Man 1 was, I still would consider this a very worthy follow-up. Vector Man here still feels as good as he did before. The levels are just as hard as they were in the first one. Maybe harder, I don't know. I remember Vector Man 2 kicking my ass a lot. However, Vector Man 2, still a good time. So while Vector Man and its sequel were both reviewed very well for the time, it would only make sense for someone, Blue Sky Software or another developer, to jump on a third one. And this is where it starts to get a little muddy. So it turns out that there was going to be a Vector Man 3, however, very little information is known on it. All we know is that there were multiple attempts to get Vector Man 3 off the ground, but every pitch made to Sega was shut down. And for years, that is all we would know about Vector Man 3. Until recently. So here in the past week, an article has came out over the cancel Vector Man 3 and its extensive development. Going under the name Vector Man 3.14 and it was going to be released on the PS2. And with this article releasing, a plethora of information has came out on the development and I gotta be honest with you, covering all of it and going into it is a bit overwhelming just so much information has piled up over the years and it just the floodgates just opened but not only does this article contain information about the development of vector man 3 it also comes with playable builds of vector man 3 yes playable builds builds as in plural and i'm not just talking about two i'm not just talking about three i'm talking 11 builds Builds. Vector Man 3 actually has three prototypes and there are 11 builds over the three prototypes. That is just insane. Now I'm not going to go over all the builds. I feel some builds don't really add much to the game or the development. Like not a lot was added to it. So we're only going to cover the ones I really think made a big impact in that matter. But before we actually get into the playable builds, I do want to mention something real quick. Is that there was a fourth attempt for Vector Man. 
kind of. This is actually the first attempt ever to make a Vector Man 3, and it was actually going to be a Vector Man 3 game on the Sega Saturn. Now, either not much is really known about this build, or they just quickly scrapped it to move on to better hardware, but we do actually have two concept artworks of Vector Man 3, and a kind of an idea and a sneak peek of what that might have been for the Sega Saturn. Very cool. Well, anyway, that's enough of that. Let's move on to the actual thing. So the company that was building these Vector Man builds was actually not Blue Sky Software. I actually think they might have been employees from Blue Sky Software that worked on Vector Man 3, but this company is going under the name Pseudo Interactive. So like I said, there are three different kind of prototypes here for Vector Man 3. You have a traditional 3D platformer, then a third person shooter, and then the final prototype is known as the Halo prototype. So the first build of the first prototype starts out like a normal 3D platformer. You'll actually find out in this first build that it's treated like a twin stick shooter. It really feels awkward and unnatural to control, and Vector Man just looks weird flipping all around the place. However, I do have to say the fast-paced nature is one of my favorite things about the first build of this prototype because it only shows up in this one. Playing as Vector Man shooting and flying all around feels satisfying for the most part. It's a little broken and I don't think it was properly balanced, however it's a first build of a first prototype so I don't think much balance went into anything. But with a little bit more time this could have been something pretty special. As we flash forward to the final build of this prototype and as you can see that it is miles better than the first build we have. Vector Man actually looks like there's solid physics to him, and it's really nice. This to me feels like if they brought the Genesis game to 3D. And I feel like companies have a hard time nailing that down, but really here in Vector Man 3, they really nailed the feeling of it. This one has a power-up that turns you into a spider. It's a pretty neat idea to play around with, and the mechanics aren't too bad either. Taking a mechanic from the Genesis games and adding it into 3D is pretty cool. And whoa, this prototype actually ends on a boss fight. And it's not bad. I ran out of bullets on the final build and softlocked myself, but other than that, this was pretty decent. It's a good prototype and a good version of a Vector Man in 3D. Also, just something I thought would be funny to mention is that this also wouldn't be a bad Iron Man game either. If they could just, you know, turn Vector Man into Iron Man, you know, you pretty much would have your Iron Man game right there. I think this one happened to be my favorite prototype out of the bunch that we're going to cover. I'm just going to spoil that right now. However, Sega didn't really have the same enthusiasm as I did, and that's why they canceled the build. I saw the potential here. This should have been Vector man's true jump to 3D. If you actually compare this to the first build of the prototype to the final build of the prototype, you can see a lot of improvement was made and you can see what the team was going for and what they wanted to do. But like I said, Sega wasn't interested in it and they axed it, leaving Pseudo to go back to the drawing board. And that's where our second prototype comes in, the third person shooter. So right off the bat, you'll see the camera has changed. This time around, Pseudo decided going in and making a third person shooter. The camera camera is locked behind Vector Man, so you won't have the freedom as you did like in the last prototype. And just like the last prototype, it's only one level just to give you a little taste of what Pseudo's second attempt would have played like. Now as odd as a concept is as a third person shooter for Vector Man, I can actually see this angle kind of working, and I wouldn't have mind seeing a Vector Man third person shooter either if done in this fashion. So both builds of this prototype start out with you having to pick up your weapons, or data chips as they're called, and once you do so, a door will open and you just go wreak havoc. Now the jump in all builds of this prototype just don't feel right. The last prototype nailed how the jumping and the floating should be in the 3D space, and this game just kind of fumbled the ball a little bit. But running around and shooting still feels pretty nice and it has an auto lock on aim when shooting which is very helpful because you're gonna need it. To get ammo in this prototype, kill an enemy, absorb them, bada boom bada bing. I want to say graphically this looks pretty decent too. It was a bit of a gameplay change and not my idea of a Vector Man 3D but an angle I still could have respected and played and got used to. However, same as last time, Sega didn't see the potential in it, and they axed it. But Pseudo wasn't done yet, they decided to go back to the drawing board one last time, and give us the prototype build known as the Halo prototype. Halo was really popular in the early 2000s, and as this prototype was coming out, Halo 2 was right around the corner. And the hype for Halo 2 was 
out of this world. So since Halo was being popular, the pseudo team took a note from it and decided to turn Vector Man into a war third person shooter known as the Halo build. And as soon as I boot it up, you can see why right off the bat people claimed it as such. They tried to go for this Gears of War Halo theme and yeesh, I, I did not like this one at all. It just feels generic. This was made in the early 2000s of the time where the edge is so sharp it'll cut ya. See in the early 2000s it was a trend to be edgy, darker, and gritty. So a lot of these franchises like Vector Man were going to get the same treatment that's why it's known as the Halo build. Another franchise got turned into this, and it didn't end well. Bomberman X Zero, anyone? This prototype is the farthest from Vector Man it has ever been. I can understand what they were going for, but this just wasn't it, Chief. Bland gameplay, bland graphics, and just rough all around. And if you want to get on me for blaming a prototype for being bad, uh, nah, 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 I just complimented those other two prototypes, and those were perfectly fine. This prototype? No, not for me, no thanks. It feels like a last option, I'm gonna be honest. Sega wasn't picking up anything that made Vector Man what it was, so why not go all out in this Halo style, you know? Try to get some of the thing that was popular, the trend of the time. Anyway, I got lost in this prototype, ran out of bullets, and just didn't know what to do, so I turned it off. However, we do have a final build of the Halo prototype, and this one right here is the final build of any Vector Man 3 game. This is the last build right here so let's see how it is and yeah they made it darker and grittier than the last build vector man is unrecognizable in this build as well. He loses his signature green for black. And while I do actually like this design, it's not Vector Man. I'm really baffled at this too because nothing here screams Vector Man to me. And honestly, it's just not fun. It's not the build, it's clearly had a lot of work done on it, but it's not Vector Man. The only thing making it Vector Man is the title and the photons from the Genesis games. The first two prototypes were onto something, that is what Vector Man 3D should have been. The only thing good about these builds is that they have a grappling hook in them. And I fucking love grappling hooks, I love swinging all around. And if that would have gotten fleshed out, that probably would have been the best part of Vector Man 3.4 if we got that one. 3.14. Damn. And as cold as it sounds, I'm actually glad Sega canceled this game. I would have canceled this game. But hey, whatever. That's my opinion. I want you to form your own opinion. And if you want to play any of these builds, I will leave a link to that article down below into the description. That way you can click on it and you can play these builds for yourself. You will need a PS2 emulator to run them, but once you get that and figure that out, it's super easy running it. There are 11 builds here. I didn't go over all 11. I think I went over maybe seven or eight of them. So there are stuff I didn't cover in this video that, hey, maybe you want to know about. Maybe those small little details matter to you that didn't matter to me to put into this video. And I wouldn't want you to miss that either. So yeah, definitely go down to the description, click that link and download those builds for you as well. Also, if you look in that article, what I think was really cool is that some people got together and made PS2 covers of what this Vector Man game would have looked like so it's also really neat that we also get covers to the game as well i thought that was just really cool but i mean look at this cover oh my god the edge well guys that's gonna do it for me to this video let me know what you think vector man 3 are you a vector man fan it is such a niche sega genesis title nowadays but back then this was actually a top dog in the standard like i said i can't believe this was fucking a rival to donkey kong country can you believe that Vector Man on the Sega Genesis. It does suck knowing that multiple attempts were made to make a Vector Man 3, like so many attempts were made, and all three of them got canceled because Sega just couldn't see the potential in this franchise. But guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Would you have played Vector Man 3D? Would you have bought it? Would you have bought Vector Man 3.14? I'd love to know all about it. Did you play the Genesis games? Let me know in the comments down below. And I'll get to you when I get to you. I have an Instagram, I have an X, and you can go follow me. Both of those links will be in the description down below. And hey, while you're down there, can we try to get this video up to 10 likes? That'll be 
much appreciated. And, I mean, while you're down there, you might as well hit that subscribe button and the bell for post notifications because I wouldn't want you to miss a single upload of mine and it would take like three seconds and I'd greatly appreciate it. For those daredevils that like to go the little extra mile, I do have a Patreon. And if you want to donate to me, that'd be super cool and feel free to do so. The link to that will be in the description down below. Well, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoy it. And just remember... That's the Dinker's Difference.